you guys. Happy Tuesday. Okay, let's get started on the fun cards today. I had so much fun creating these. So first we're going to start with this card, which is um, this kind of gray card here. And there's some lines on here. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to cut that out. Okay. Uh, if you use a paper cutter, just want to make sure to press, if you're using a rotary paper, rotary paper cutter you just want to press the blade only on where those lines are um, but I just drew a line and um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it out now I'm going to cut it on it doesn't for those of you that don't really care you can just cut it right out for those of you that do care I'm going to cut it on the this side of the black line okay so that the black line does not show up on the little square I'm cutting out all right so on this side I'm going to get cutting out on this side of the black line okay so again, some of you just don't even care at all, and that's totally fine, because you're like, you're just cutting on the line, and yes, <laughs> that's true, but sometimes people, you know, if you're working on something and you want it, you want to know, um, surprisingly, there's like a, a 30 seconds of an inch on a, um, the black line, you know, what the, it takes up the black line, the thickness is, and so when you cut on one side or the other, you end up, that's like a 30 second of an inch. Not really enough to notice, but sometimes people notice. So this piece we're actually going to save for the next card. Okay, the pieces that you're going to need for this piece here are going to be these four um, brown pieces of paper here, and these two little silver metallic -y pieces, and then um, also this little um, white piece here. Okay, so. I'm going to grab the craft mat so that it's a little bit easier to see what I'm working on here, even though the base is gray. Okay. So, when we lay this on here, um, I'm going to go ahead and start out by taking a black, my little fine line black pen. This is called a le pen, kind of like French le, le pen. I don't know if you guys can see the brain there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start by um, drawing a little wood grain. To draw a little wood grain, I just kind of start out by drawing kind of a squiggly line, and then I just draw a series of little lines right next to it that kind of match up. For those of you that have seen my videos before, I refer to this as Pangea because it's kind of like, um, like the continents like kind of match up. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of do that. It does not need to be perfect, and sometimes I'll just draw like a series of little lines, and then some of them will wrap around. See how I did that? How it, the one went part way, and then this one kind of went around that way. Um, work to create a knot in the wood. You just kind of do a little circle, and then another little circle around it. It's kind of a little wonky kind of a circle, like this guy. See what I did there? Okay, so now I'm going to do that on all of these. La la la. You can kind of see, sometimes you can kind of do this kind of a thing. See what I did there? I kind of draw like a little loop, another one, another one, and then a line that kind of goes around them all. So there are lots of different ways to kind of create like a faux kind of wood grain. So these are just some really quick ways to do that. And as we kind of finish that up, so we're going to do four of those little wood grain plank pieces here. And if you find that you did this where there's like a large gap, you can always go back in and add like a more line. So if you have a gap that's like maybe an eighth of an inch, you're like, wow, that's way too wide. You can just go back in and just add another little line right there in between it. Okay. And so your wood grains don't all have to be exactly the same or perfect, but see how they're like coming along kind of nicely. I like how those look. I'm happy with that. And you kind of learn as you go. And if you mess up, you can always do something on the other side. Or if you're just like totally not into the wood grain, you don't have to do this at all. Um, you can also take um, just a little bit, a bit of darker paint. And if you have a little bit of um, dark paint, Oh, I messed up on this. You can see what I did here. I did a straight line and I hit the straight line. Ooh, that did not look good. Uh, if you take a little bit of like um, dark brown, like watercolor or a little bit of dark brown um, acrylic paint, acrylic paint, it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. Um, but if you do that and you can go in and you can add a little bit of some color along the edges. And uh, if you take a sponge, a little bit of acrylic paint or an ink pad, you can brush that along the edge of your paper and kind of make it look kind of old. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a moment. 
So I'm going to, um, when you're doing inking, which is making it look kind of old, um, you're going to want to grab some little sponges. Hopefully mine are very accessible, even though I forgot I was going to do this part. Because sometimes I don't realize when I do inking, I'm just like, oh, I want to add the ink. So this is just a sponge. It kind of, it's a crafting sponge. It has old ink, you know, though it's been on it, but it's not really coming off my hand anymore. So I'm picking up a little bit of the ink from the ink pad. If you take the ink pad directly, this is a brown ink pad and rub it along the edge um, right on it. It's going to be really dark, really intense. Um, so you can take a sponge and you, that kind of makes it so it's a little bit softer and you can just put ink along the edges. And this again, makes it look kind of old. And if you have acrylic paint or watercolors, you can do this with a watercolor palette. Um, acrylic paint, you're going to want to dab out and then add a little bit of water. So it's a lot, um, a thinner is what really a, th a lot thinner paint. Um, and then you can do this. Of course, again, acrylic paint's going to take a lot longer to dry, but it's, you know, a way to use things you have laying around your house to do this inking. Okay. All right. So I'm doing it all along the edge. If you want it to go really fast, what you can also do, it doesn't look as good, but you can just go like this. Just really quick. So another way to get the ink on. Again, it doesn't really look as good in my opinion, but it does apply it very fast. Okay, so once you have those all inked, and it does actually add something once you have the ink on there, I think. It may add a little bit of depth it makes it a little bit more interesting. All right. So now we're going to go on here and we're going to, this, we, I don't know if you guys noticed this, we're actually creating windows. This is a windowsill. Okay. So I'm going to start out here and, um, I'm going to want to, this is, I'm not, I don't want this to be this long. Um, maybe, maybe we do. Um, but basically my idea here is that my window maybe would, I was only going to do my window just right here around this little square. Okay. And I already left like some top and bottom. So if you don't, if you want your window to be larger than this, um, you know, if you want it to be kind of like, you know, kind of funky looking kind of like that, you can leave it like that. Um, or you can make your window go all the way down and all the way to the top there. If you do that, you're going to want to cut your piece of, um, your gray paper. You're going to want to cut that so probably another quarter of an inch so that that opens up your window more. Okay. So because I want to, I'm going to keep my window. It's just going to be about that big. I'm going to need to trim um, my little window piece here. I'm going to do that on two of those. Okay. So that way those are only going to go about that far. And then this, we're going to um, go across there and I can just trim that off. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue at the top and bottom right there. I'm going to stick this on. This is going to go all the way up against the edge of my fold. Okay. So that when I fold that later, oops, we'll put the stick there and glue for just a moment. So that way when I fold this later, it's just going to be right there. Oh, and on the inside, by the way, I stamp fairies. <laughs> so I stamp fairies on the outside and on the inside. So the idea is that when you look through this window that we're making, you see fairies. Oh, it's going to be so cool. All right. So then you're going to put a little dab of glue top and bottom there, and you're going to glue your other little panel on there like that. Okay. Now we're going to glue this along the top here. So here we can put glue all the way along the top and then I'm going to stick this guy on here. I'm doing this so that it's right up against the edge of the gray, but it is overlapping just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, not very much just a little bit okay and then along the bottom here all right okay so then once you have your um, little window guy going on there now i'm going to go ahead and just trim this off <gasps> i messed up i just realized the piece that i drew on the back of you can see that Oh, I messed up. I'm going to go ahead and just quickly cover that up by cutting another piece so that you can't see it. Oh, I can't believe I did that. How dare I? That was a mistake. Well, learn from my mistakes, my friends. But if you did that, don't. If you drew on the back of yours, you want to make sure that you glue that one to the top or bottom where it's hidden. Okay. So, 
and that is half an inch. Those are half inch eye pieces, just so you know. All right, let's see if I can cover that up. Dun dun da Easy enough to do. All right. Fixed. Okay. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to, um, oh, actually not quite yet. Okay. So now we have our window here. Of course, there are no little panes in the window. So that's what this little silver, these little silver, um, tiny little strips of paper are here. Okay. These little guys. So you could do classic, just one, two, just lay that on there. I'm not going to do that. I want that to be way more fun. So I am going to do, let's see if I have enough pieces to do this with. Okay, we'll see, I'm gonna do two like this. I'm trimming this really short, but not so that it's exactly, but it's gonna overlap a very, very tiny amount um, on the left and right side of the window there. And I think that if I did this correctly and did one, two there, Let's see if my little pieces here will match up. If I can do this little guy, try to line that up and do it one more in there. I think that I think if I do that, I can do one, two there. And I'm gonna do this guy. We'll get a six a six window little or six pane little window I guess is what I'm gonna call it. So I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of glue here and here and I'm talking like hardly any like you could even apply it with like a toothpick if you wanted to. Just a tiny little bit. And then left and right there. Oh, and I'm just going to push that up. That's why it's important that your glue is strong so that we could don't do not leave very much space to glue that in. To glue that down. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and glue this last little guy down there. I think I need to move this down. Okay. And you can also arrange your panels based off of how much of your fairies you can see too. So that's something else to um, consider there. Oh gosh, my panels really do need to have even space between them. It's going to drive me crazy if I don't. Okay, then I'm going to glue this guy on. I'm determined if he's going to go all the way up. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim this off here, like so. And then we're going to finish this off by, I'm going to glue this on the back side of this. Only on this piece right here. And then we'll trim this short. And glue that down that piece next. Okay. Ah! Because I had too much glue. All right. 
So once you are satisfied with your window pane, and I love mine, very cute. The idea is that we're inside looking out the window in case you didn't figure that out. Oh, so cute. So precious. Okay, so then once your um, window is closed, you can kind of decide where you want to put your moon kind of based off of where you can kind of see it. So if you want it kind of tucked up there in the corner, or if you want it to be kind of down here, or maybe you want the fairies kind of um, like they're at, looking at it, or maybe your moon is rising. Um, there are so many different choices there for um, how you want to arrange that. I think I really like it up here. I really enjoy that. Ooh, I like it that it's in kind of the two windows there. I think that's really enjoyable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue that in place. All right. And the last little thing that we're going to add in and that I had not planned on doing until right this exact moment, but we are totally doing it, is adding some of these little iridescent stars in there. Oh, which I love. So we're going to do some little tiny little dots of some little glue. Um, the iridescent stars are really fun um, because they are just iridescent and so they really match any paper that you're going to put them on um, and they're just like basically white. These come from Creative Expressions and I just love them. I'm just going to stick a bunch of them on them and just kind of let them stick to the the glue there. You can kind of press them in place if you would like, or you can just kind of shake some on and then shake some off. Okay. All right. Oh, oh my gosh. It's so much fun. So there we have the inside with all of those magical little stars there. And then of course the outside there. Okay, now to finish this off for the outside, just to kind of um, make this kind of gray just a little bit more fun, um, I don't really have like a curtain really to create for you, you know, to kind of be like, oh, pull the shades back. So if you want to do something like that, of course you can. I'm just going to show you a really quick way to make um, a quick little doodle that makes it look kind of elegant, but um, not very hard to do. And you're just going to create these little scallops. Okay. If you go kind of quickly, you'll find that your scallop tends to be pretty consistent. And then just do a little dot inside like this. Really, really, really easy way to just make it look a little bit more fun with not very much work. Okay, so very cute. And then if you wanted to, you can add like um, a little line or two just to kind of like finish it off. I'm just going to grab this little black piece of paper here and just make a little line. Because then we're going to make another one right above it. And for whatever reason, that just quickly adds something. I don't know. I'm not sure what that is, but it just kind of makes it kind of feel a little bit more finished. My ones at the top here, I'm going to have just a little bit larger scallop. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Just little dots inside the scallops. And then I'm using my little piece of paper here as a faux ruler. Do you like how that goes? Just a new straight edge. And I'm just going to do two little lines. Right next to each other. Okay. Look at that. How fun. I did not include a sentiment with this because I figured if you wanted to, you could add your own little sentiment. Um, people always ask me, like, where do I write in the card? Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes I don't really think about that because I get so excited in designing the card. So, you can write down here, up and down right there, or you can write right here. Write down right there. Or, what I oftentimes will do, is I'll write on the back. I'll write a little message on the back. Um, I'll make a little draw, like a little arrow inside. But you can write your little sentiment there and there. Um, I've also seen people that will tuck a little message inside, and that works out really well. Okay, so there is card number one. Love it.